Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Audio bandwidth for the weekly Daily Gizwiz is provided by the new Winamp for Android, featuring wireless sync and one-click iTunes import. Now with free daily music downloads and full-length CD listening parties. Download it for free at winamp.com slash android. Video bandwidth for the weekly Daily Gizwiz is provided by Cashfly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. It's time for the Weekly Daily Gizwiz with Matt's maddest writer, Dick D. Bartolo. This is episode 1362, recorded April 21st, 2012. Earth Day Gadgets. The Weekly Daily Gizwiz is brought to you by Netflix. Watch thousands of TV episodes and movies on your PC, Mac, iPad, iPhone, or TV instantly. All stream directly to you, saving you time, money, and hassle. For your free 30-day trial... Go to netflix.com slash twit. And now, get ready for Dick. The sign is in place. Check. I've got my headphones on. Check. Dick DiBartolo is in the house. Check. Check. All the audience members have left. Check. D-A-I-A. It's time for the show. I've invented, by the way, I don't know if you know this, Dick, a new dance. The Weekly Daily Gizwiz. The Weekly Daily Gizwiz. The Weekly Daily Gizwiz. Nice. Yeah, it's that like is YMCA. CD quality. Yep, yeah. yep. I think you should put... <laughs> Get Rhino Records. Yes. <laughs> the Weekly... So everybody, when you hear the jingle, you now have to form the letters. Weekly Daily G- Gizwiz. W. I... D. <laughs> no, I was just doing W G D J W. Oh, okay. okay. W. That's good. Oh, I got a stitch in my side. All that exercise. Hello there, Dicky D. Leo, how you doing, pal? Oh, I'm excited. I'm going to Norway. You know. <laughs> maybe you didn't. Maybe you didn't hear. <laughs> you know, I think it would have been cheaper to just pay your taxes and not move. But uh, do what you yes. want. You know, have you been watching? You probably haven't. Lily Hammer. Uh no, it's I on have Netflix. It in my queue, but yeah. I have not been watching. So it. it's Little Stevie, Steve Van Zant of the fame, Bruce Springsteen, and the Sopranos fame. Because, huh? Next Tuesday, Next Tuesday, you're gonna see Bruce Springsteen. Eli's all excited. He's gonna see Bruce Springsteen. He had to come in running in and tell me that. Will does Stevie still play in the band? Wow, that's neat. But he also is as as a pretty good acting career going. He was in the. Uh, he was in The Sopranos. What was the name of the character he played in The Sopranos? It was a. It was one of the gangsters. Let me see if I can. Uh, Van Zant. Let me just see if I can find. Anyway, he. Uh, here's here's a picture of him in The Sopranos. You can you'll recognize him there. In the oh Sopranos. yeah. Yeah. He was. I he think was, I bought pizza from him this afternoon. Yeah, I know he's perfect. Perfect yeah, for yeah. that show. And hmm. although his name is Van Zant, which makes me think he's Dutch, not Italian, but he sure looks, he sure got the look, doesn't he? And yeah. then, so this new wow. show, Lillehammer, he plays basically the same character, uh, except this time he's uh, been in, entered into the witness protection program. And they say, where do you want to go? As we should be. As we should be. As we. By the way, this is what he looks like when he's playing with the boss, with Bruce Springsteen. doesn't look like anything like that. You know, he's like, he's kind of, he's cool looking, right? But uh, so, in fact, he wears a wears a do rag for some reason. I don't think he wears that in the uh, Sopranos. Anyway, so in this, he plays basically the same character, except that he's in the witness protection program, and they're relocating him. and he And they say, "Well, where would you like to go?" And he says, "Lillehammer." And they say, "Where?" And he says, "Lillehammer." They said, "Why would you? It's in Norway. Why? It's freezing. Why would you yeah. want to go to Lillehammer?" He says, "I saw it on the Winter Olympics. It looked clean." <laughs> so, they, so they sell him to Lillehammer, and uh, and it's freezing, and he becomes friends. You know, his neighbor is the chief of police. It's a, it's actually a very funny show. I've watched the first few episodes, and it's just really great, just really great. So that's mostly what I know about Norway. I asked on the air yesterday, uh, actually on the Twitter, I asked, 
how do you say I don't I said I usually when I go somewhere I know a little bit about the country I know nothing I don't even know how to say hello goodbye thank you I don't even know what kind of money they use and fortunately I thanks to the Twitter I now know uh, that hello is hey thank you er, that's easy uh, uh, thank you is talk and I don't know what goodbye is but I don't plan on saying goodbye. Untalk. And, untalk. <laughs> TikTok. And then... Yeah, TikTok. Uh, TikTok. Yeah. And, then, uh, and then the money, I thought maybe it was a euro, but not they're not part of the European Union. The money is the, kron the Norwegian kroner uh, or uh, crown. And it's worth $5.72. No, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's the other way around. $1 is worth 5.72 kroners. Oh, that's good. So that, yeah, well, I don't know if it's good or bad. I do know that booze is very expensive there. I've been told, bring your own booze. And how are you going to do that? Well, this is what our host, Mikkel Oland, who's the Norwegian photographer who's bringing us, uh, told us to do. He said, when you get to the airport early and go to the duty-free shop and stock oh, up okay. and then bring it on the plane because he says it's very expensive. So bring your own. Okay, so yeah. it's an educational trip. It's a yes. <laughs> Apparently, butter is expensive too, so I'll bring my own butter as well. Oh yeah, that's good. And <laughs> eggs. <laughs> and I mean, why not? <laughs> I come from Petaluma, bearing butter and eggs. Uh, anyway, it's BYOB. That's right. Anyway, it's going to be. Uh, I'm very excited. I'm. It's freezing cold there, because we're not going to Oslo, on the east coast. We're going to the central. West Coast. I mean, it's pretty pretty far north. We're going to a little tiny town called Christiansund, and uh, that's because it's a f there's a we're going to a, the uh, Nordic Light Festival in Christiansund. It's a very small town. I, I don't I don't think it's uh, I I don't know if it's a tourist attraction or or what. It will be. It's yes, and it, but it, well, it's beautiful. It's in the islands, you know. So um, it's right it's right here. In the it would be in the, uh, the 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 top of the spoon bowl of Norway, and apparently very cold, forty seven degrees today with a low of thirty seven degrees. It's colder than it was all year in New York. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's very yeah. true. So yeah, seventy three now. Yeah, so it's it's where the first Norwegians were. So. It's going to be I'm I can't wait. I don't know what the food is like there though. I think there's a lot of fish. But I don't know. I think it's going to be on the, the uh, Norwegian side. It's Somewhat Norwegian. Guess. I'm not an I'm not an international yeah. traveler. Yeah. But Norwegian -y, I think it would be. Norwegian. -y. <laughs> yeah. It's 47 <laughs> degrees Fahrenheit. It's 5 degrees centigrade. 4 or 5 degrees. It's very chilly. Very chilly. And you know what it is here in Petaluma right now it's 90 degrees. Wow. Yeah, it's beautiful. Wow. Beautiful. So, uh, anyway, enough about my travels. Any, uh, What we're trying to decide is what to do next Saturday when we normally do the Gizwiz. I won't be here. Scott Wilkinson will be doing um, the... Uh, oh, somebody... I'm sorry. Web2957 says, uh, once again, it's all about Leo. Yeah. <laughs> 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 what did you think it was all about? Of course. So, <laughs> no, it's all about David Letterman. That's this is the David Letterman yeah, channel. Yeah, <laughs> this week in Letterman. Uh, <laughs> uh, what was I saying? I forgot. Anyway, uh, uh, Scott Wilkinson. Scott Wilkinson. Will be, thank you. He'll be yeah. he'll be filling yeah. in for me uh, on the tech guy. And I was thinking maybe you know initially because the last time I was gone, you did this great match game thing, and it was really fun. Yeah. Um, but but maybe we'll get Scott to do the. I don't know. We haven't decided. I'll see if Scott wants yeah. to do the gizmo. See me. if see if he feels like doing it. Yeah, because I'm up for it. But enough about me. What about yes. you? How has your week been? Uh, my week was good. My boat has been fixed and is up and running. Oh, how exciting! And so Myra and I and Dennis and Bob Kyler, the guy who fixed it, we're going to go for a boat ride after the show. What was wrong with it? Was it broken? No, you know what? It, it, it would run and stall, and it, it was unreliable. You couldn't leave the dock because it would run for three minutes. And Anyway, Bob found out that there's a, 
there's a harness that goes from the back of the boat into the engine and everything is in there, the shift, the cables and all the electric wiring and everything. And anyway, since the engine's 10 years old, the harness was starting to weigh down on the gas line. And so it sometimes would let gas go through and run. Sometimes it would let gas trickle through and the boat would sort of run. Anyway, Bob put a copper pipe inside the uh, regular hose so that now gas will flow uncontrollably. <laughs> so, well, that's good. Does that yeah, mean, it, yeah. mean it moves faster or it bursts into flame? Well, at least it will move. No, yeah. Well, we're going to, you know, the, he put it in this afternoon. So Myra's brave enough for uh, us to give it a trial tonight. Yeah. Yay. Yay. Yeah. I see oh, Myra. I think I something. see Myra right behind you. Myra's there and Bob Kylo is uh, sitting. She's uh, also uh, in the witness protection program. So we've got to. Uh, yep, she is. Oh, and that's Bob. <laughs> hey, Bob. Right All right. Right. And I, I can show you one little quickie thing. You know, people bring you gifts. Well, Bob found this neat little thing. He found on someone selling on the street New York City subway cars. Wow, they're a lot smaller you know, than I thought they'd be. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's part of the crowding reason. <laughs> uh, yeah. And then when you push the little button on the roof. Attention, platform one. Oh. Train is approaching. Please stand clear of the platform edge. Mind the gap. Isn't that cute? That's yeah, really great. And, and it lights up. Yeah, it's very close. That very is really close. neat. So now can yeah. that fit on your existing track or? No, actually, it, it's it's uh, looks like it's HO gauge, and my stuff is uh, G. Oh, but uh, it's it's great for a shelf. Yeah, no kidding. You don't care. You're not picky. No, I, don't care. No, I just like no. things that look like trains. In fact, I bet G <laughs> is hard to find because it's kind of big. G is easy to find, wildly expensive. Uh, uh, yeah. Anyway, is that the woman's what? voice that it actually is the subway lady, or is that somebody? No, no, I think it's somebody. Uh, yeah, because I can understand her. <laughs> Usually it sounds like Yes, exactly yeah. You know, it's very funny, Leah I was once at uh, uh, Innovations down at uh, Disneyland Right uh, Disney, Disneyland The uh, actual Disneyland, was, yes Yeah, the, the, real, the real Disneyland And I was doing a, a thing for ABC News On, on new inventions And this uh, PR guy comes over and goes uh, I have this new uh, double balanced uh, Rear-facing amplifying uh, pi, uh, Triathlon Parthenon <laughs> uh, device That I think you're And I, I said, sir, I don't even know what you're saying <laughs> So anyway, as I'm walking around the show I see a booth that says the cl the subway clear announcement speaker system. Oh. And I went over to the person and I oh. said, this is a great idea. And the PR person came over and said to me, oh, I thought you weren't interested in this. <laughs> <laughs> I said, are you possibly describing the same thing? <laughs> Wait a minute, Dick. You can't look at it. You said you didn't want to. Oh, that is funny. Oh yeah. my God! It's a ride, that's hysterical. It? Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, yes, that's exactly the way it is. That's exactly, yeah. And then, so, you know, yeah. And then you know, I turned to someone once one day and I said, "Did they say spaghetti?" Mm. I'm not sure. <laughs> you it's, know, I, I in in the French uh, railway, it's actually. Let me see if I could find a French railway uh, announcement because they play uh, this great little sound. And it goes dun dun da da, and then it's a you could tell she's a gorgeous uh, French girl saying the, you know what's going on, and they say it in French, which is very romantic, and then in English. Let me see if I I don't know if this will be it. This is on YouTube. <laughs> Doesn't she sound hot? Yeah. And then love that tum We have jumped the track and we'll be in this tunnel for seven hours. But it sounds <laughs> That's Now you can understand that. Even if it's in a foreign language, I can understand oh, it. Yeah, it's in the subway. Yeah, keep your hands and feet out of the subway doors. It's perfect. But I just love that bum, bum, bum. Let me play it one more time. I just love this. I have to zip it back here. It's like singing. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, yeah. Well, the New York City subway system, it's its similar. It just starts with, yo. Yay. <laughs> yo. Hey, there, take your hands off the door. I'm trying to move here. 
Um, I think the Japanese Metro uh, announcements are quite beautiful, too. I, I, I don't know for sure, but the only reason I say so is because I have a um, sound set for my, um, my uh, instant messenger that's Japanese. Let me see if this is it. This is Japanese. Oh, my God. They're jamming in there. Look at that. There's actually a oh, guy yes, 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 in white gloves. Yes, He's going to shove people. Look at that. Yes. He's going to shove them in once they... Okay, push! Heave! Look at that. He's jammed. They're jamming people into the subway. Look at that. At least he's wearing white gloves. That is horrible. (laughs) These last five minutes in New York City. This is hysterical. I've, (laughs) I've heard that that happens. Wait a minute. Here comes another one. Here comes another guy. They, wait a minute. I gotta sh- they couldn't get them all in. Look at this. <laughs> another, another guy wanders in. Oh, let me help. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I wasn't on the camera. Oh, my goodness. This is this is crazy. Oh, oh another guy. Another guy comes in. <laughs> Four. Four guys. Jam- for the, I, 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 we have to describe this. Oh, fifth. they got the door closed. Look, they got them all in. Can you imagine what it's like in that no. train, though? No. And look, he's jamming in pieces of clothing with their white gloves. Okay. All good. That is absolutely. I I think I won't be taking the uh, the metro. In the... Look. Oh, quick, get this one in. Oh, he's really sticking out. Oh, look at that fat butt. Okay, push it. All right, we got it. They have actually hired at the Japanese subway stations four or five guys in nice little outfits <laughs> with white gloves to jam. <laughs> Look at that car. <laughs> People are pressed up against doors. What, what is your job? Oh, I push people into subway cars. <laughs> yeah. If, they would do, if what's my line was still on the air, I could book him that in a That would be good. <laughs> I don't think I have to worry about that in Christensen. I'm just thinking. Yeah. All right. Let us. I'm so sorry. I got completely sidetracked, and uh, I, I apologize to everybody listening at home. They're called Oshia, apparently. Um, he who must push. I he think who must transport. push. Oshia. <laughs> Corgan knows about this. Um, Mick says they did that when my wife and kids and I were in Tokyo. My daughter wound up on top of people and. The entire trip, she never did to get her feet back on the ground. Oh my, that is just bizarre. That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, like if the subway stalls, I, now, I would go berserk. Now, let's play. This is a Long Island Railway. Just to give you a, an example of how it sounds in New York, here's the Long Island Railroad. The Harris Road Grade Cross Elimination Project in Mineola will be completed during the weekend of April 25th and the 26th. Actually, it's pretty good. This work will Not allow Long Railroad trains to travel over Harris Road on a new rail bridge and new tracks. Starting at 11 p.m. Friday. April. That wasn't so bad. I can understand. No. That. No. <laughs> but uh, they're, they're endless because they, they, they have this new, they're doing this new thing called Fast Track. And instead of doing the tracks a little every night, they just close down huge uh, sections of the uh, of the subway for o- overnight, oh. starting at ten oh. and uh, ending at eight the next morning. And when you get on the train, it says the number five will not be running after ten p.m. But take the seven bus transfer at Forty Second Street. Get the L line that'll take you to Brooklyn, <laughs> where you'll get a free transfer. You know, I go. Nobody. Here's, here's the Lexington. This is the number six Lexington. This is a Bowling Greenbound six train. That's the next bad. stop is oh, you know Fulton. What? That's the new lady. This is one of the new subway cars that are yeah. beautiful. Oh. They're all stainless. Ooh. They have the subway map. And as the train goes, the the dots on the map light up. And then uh, there's That's neat. So you know where you are. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a readout that says what the next station is. It, yeah. Those are great. I have to say... I, I, People sometimes, I think, especially in Manhattan, are reluctant to use the subway. It's the best way to get around because oh, there's no traffic. No. I love the yeah. subway. And you can get everywhere easily, in, inexpensively. I always take the uh, the metro in uh, Paris. I like underground uh, transportation. Yeah. Oh. 
And they've uh, now installed uh, signs. How how many minutes to the next train? And they're very accurate. Yes, yeah, it's, it's it's really. I'm not. Cra- I don't think I'm going to go on the subway in Tokyo, though. At least not during no, rush so, hour. That was crazy. That was really uh, insane. Mm. All right, gadget number one, which has nothing gadget to do. Gadget number one. With okay, th- this week was uh, Earth Day, and in some places they called it Earth Week. So there were two. Uh, events. Uh, one was uh, Echo Fest, and another event was the, cre- the, the uh, Green Products Show. So from Echo Fest, I found something new from Lutron. You know the name Lutron, right? Lutron, I do, yeah. Yeah, and they make... They make, like, uh, light switches and stuff. Yes, exactly, exactly. They In make fact, a, I think I have what you have. It, do you have a, a cough, and then are you itchy? <laughs> no, 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 no. No, I think I have what you have. It's in. I have it. it, it it's. It, go ahead. It's the for the iPhone. Oh. Okay. No, no, no. no? This is something totally new. Because oh, Lutron okay. sent me something. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, okay, okay. No, that they're in a whole different division now. They've introduced something called Serena Remote Control Shades. Oh, I don't know about this. And yeah, this is this is interesting because the the PR lady said it is the first and only right now battery operated shade system, so that you can put the shades in with and not worry about any kind of electrical wiring. I said, yeah, but running on batteries, how long could they last? Right. And she said, depending on the width, it either takes four D batteries or six D batteries, yeah. and going up and down twice a day. Every day of the year, the D batteries will last three years. Oh, that's not bad. No, I think it was great. And she said they have a special circuitry that if one set of batteries in one window are wearing down and you put fresh batteries in a different window, this little thing will actually make sure that the shades always move at the exact same speed. Oh, I like this. Yeah. So the uh, they start at two hundred ninety nine dollars, and it's any window three by five feet. And you go online and you tell them their measurements. And and, and I said, to her, well, you know, I, I think this is a great idea, but but why are you at uh, at Echo Fest? And she said, well, they are cellular uh, shades, and she showed me the side of one, ah. so that they actually are an air barrier shade. So in the summer, it keeps the sun from from bringing the heat indoors and in the winter holds the heat in so you, you don't have heat escaping through the windows. It's really neat. And they offer remote control, two different systems, RF remote control or IR. I want which, this. Which, I want this for yeah. my new home theater that I'm building in my room that I can oh, press really? a button and everything would go. Boom. Zoom. Yes. Yes, and they make they make it in three different fabrics, three different doctors. They do have a blackout. One, they have a blackout. Yes, one, yeah. one of them is blackout. Wow. And the IR, if you want, you can program your regular remote control and just add this. Oh. Add the look. The, they uh, have shape. an iPhone app too. It looks like they do. Yeah. Wow, so, that is so cool. This is, and she said that they they have almost one hundred shades, so you can match uh, the decor of your room. And uh, yeah, I think it's pretty nifty. It's fifteen dollars extra for the remote. And I said, "Well, why why fifteen dollars extra?" And she said, "Well, you know what? We really don't know how many remotes people want. They may want, right. uh, you know, one Buy remote more than just, one. Let's put it that way." Yes, I would. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And the remotes, I think she said, were fifteen to twenty dollars. And Doctor so Mom says she's going to send me a robot so I don't for my snacks, so I could just sit in the chair, close the shades, lower the screen, turn on the TV, and the robot will bring me my snacks, and I'll never move again. Perfect. 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 Thank you, Doctor Mom. You knew. This we, is, you knew how to kill him <laughs> faster and faster. Uh, yeah, I think they're pretty swell. They're at Serena Shades. S E R E N A Shades. Yeah. Serena Shades. They have a, they have a bunch of uh, information and yeah. so forth. Yeah. What a good idea. I, yeah, I thought so too. Yeah, I like that, and I like it. They're eco. That they're. You know, because they're made out of grass or something, <laughs> yeah, right? right? Hemp. Hemp. Uh, yeah, I you think know, you're I, right. I think they're made out of hemp. Hemp. All right. I can have battery-powered or plug-in adapter. I'm going to get battery-powered. 
Wow. Yeah, yes, you can you can buy a little uh, twelve volt. Uh, I'm not even sure what the voltage is, but it plugs into the wall but then and you then don't into have the wires. Shade. Or you but can no, have the thing yeah. is, yeah, the thing is, if six batteries or four batteries, depending on the side of your shade, can last three years, why Shh, bother? Why not? Yeah, right. And she showed me that you know they hang this the same way you'd hang a picture, and it's pretty neat, pretty easy to do. And it looks like they go as as uh, high as uh, or as wide as eighty two inches. And then you can have the thickness, and the height goes as high as, uh, wow, 82. So you could have, you, you, you could have, I mean, I th that's what, 82 inches is uh, seven feet. Seven feet, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's neat. And neat. then lots of fabric styles. I'm, I'm actually going through it right now. You can get the light filtering single cell that transforms harsh daylight into a soft filtered glow, or the room yes. darkening, or the double cell, which is kind of neat. Some light goes in. Oh, that's good. Yeah. But it never comes out. <laughs> it bounces around. The light around. goes in. Yes. But it, <laughs> it never comes out. Very nice. All right, that's gadget number one. Now we have a yeah. video. A Speaking video, of eco. <laughs> yeah. Well, Leo, you are going to freak out when you see this video. Remember we talked a couple of weeks ago about how long it takes a product to get to market? Well, here's a product that you, I think, will recognize uh, and it was very noisy now, so I brought the guy out into the hall, so there's a bit of an echo. But tell me if this product does not ring a bell with you. And right. here it is from Echo Fest. The Tibortolo man's mad to try to end the Gizwiz with this week's weekly daily Gizwiz video. You know, it's Earth Day or eight, uh, Earth Week or Earthworm something. Anyway, whatever it is, uh, we're at an Earth event and we're talking about saving energy. And I ran into Tim, and Tim was carrying something. I said, Tim, this looks vaguely familiar. It should. Your viewers have seen this before. Your viewers have seen a previous version of this. Oh, okay. At CES, right? That's right. At CES, this is the N-Power Peg. It's the world's first passive kinetic energy charger for handheld electronics. Is this just a thing you wear and generate electric? That's right. If you put this in your bag, briefcase, or backpack, and you walk, it will harvest your kinetic energy. Oh, you don't have to wear it. You can wear it. You can wear it. I okay. saw you wearing it. I gave it to put it in your pocket, I think. Oh, I did. yeah. I generated so much electric. This entire building is being powered by just what I generated walking. <laughs> no. So, so, okay. so you put it in your bag, your briefcase. It's meant to be passive, so you don't have to actually act on it. It just sits in your bag. While you do your thing, it does its thing. As you well, move, it has to be a certain amount of movement, right? It can be any movement at all. Let's show you how uh, it works. I heard, okay, yeah. Let's show that. you how it works. So, have you heard of Michael Faraday? Uh, I had lunch with him. Great guy. Right. He <laughs> no. invented, Faraday was the... He was the, inve he was the discoverer of the Faraday effect, which is that a magnet passing through a coil will impart a charge to the coil. My first guess. So okay. in, the pe in the peg is a magnet. Okay. There's also a coil. Any kinetic energy going into the peg will move the magnet up and down through a coil. That will generate a charge to the coil. And that charge will go into a battery for use later. And how big is the battery that's in there? This is a 2,000 milliamp battery mounted down here. Okay. Now, this is double the capacity of the original PEG. The original PEG had a 1,000 milliamp battery. Okay. And also, is the unit physically smaller? It looks different. It's a little bigger. Oh, it's bigger. And the okay. reason it's bigger is because we added a hook so that you can hang it off of a tree or you can hang it off of your hammock. Uh, or your, oh, ba or, or so your backpack okay. or your belt. If you put this in a tree and it was right. rocking. So let's say this is a tree and it's a windy day right. and, and this is what's going on. It doesn't, kinda, doesn't look like anything's going on when in fact that, mag no, wait, that the magnet. Tree, the tree's doing this. Right. But sometimes you'll see a. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. There it will, you go. It will oh, harvest yeah, it will. just about any. Yeah, that's good. That's it good. will harvest just about any okay. movement. Now. Three years ago, it was going to sell for. One, it was going to sell for one fifty nine ninety nine. It's now selling for one sixty nine ninety nine because we've doubled the capacity. Okay, very good. And it's going to be available. Let's say a month. Okay, <laughs> let's say a month. Right. <laughs> we may be kidding. There's still a prototype battery or prototype number on here. Okay. Uh, so we're testing them to make sure they work. Okay. And we're hoping within a month they will be ready. Okay. Uh, Tim, and Tim, your website is? npowerpeg.com. npowerpeg.com. So this is pretty nifty. Uh, Dick T. Bartolo, Man's Man, is trying to end the Gizwiz with the weekly 
daily Gizwiz video, generating power as I talk. Bye. Oh, he's, you're absolutely right, Ray. And it's DVD says if we just hooked one up to Liz. As she bounces, or me even, I could probably generate. Oh, you electric. would generate a lot of electric, Leo. Uh, but I, yeah. I guess that's really the question: is how long Leo, do you have is, to bounce to fill know, up that battery? It is long, and I'll tell you, they were. I, um, it was a good thing that they did it because they published how long it takes on their website. <laughs> on the other hand, it's going to make people think, "What?" So this yeah. is it: a minute of walking. Gives you one minute of listening to an iPod Nano. Well, that's fair. It's one to one. That's not so bad. One, one to one, yes. But then it gets a little worse. Twenty six minutes of walking equals one minute of talk time oh. on an iPhone using three G. Oh. So that's. I mean, the thing is, if you walk around, if you walk a lot, and you throw this in your backpack. And you bike a lot, and you want to hang this thing. You know, you would over time or be generating one trip power. on the New York City subway. Yeah, but Leo, the, never buy this if you live in Japan because when they jam you <laughs> in a subway car, there you is don't know no where the movement. Peg. There's no <laughs> There's movement. There's no movement. You're sealed. <laughs> Huh. I got out of a, a Japanese subway, and it was minus energy. It just <laughs> I just floated the whole way home. Anyway, first introduced at CES in 2009. You have a good memory that you remembered seeing this. Uh, yeah, I do. But, well, because it just seems so bizarre. Yeah, I remember and then it when now, I, though. When you, once, yeah, once when, I, when I saw it at the show, I thought, hmm. are they, has it finally hit the marketplace? It seems to be yet another month away. <laughs> it's always one yes. month away. Right. Well, well, at CES 2012, uh, 2013, We'll probably see him there going, one month. more it's month. just a month. What just month? We don't one. know what month. No, year. Oh, you didn't mention year. Yeah. Well, that's all right. That's good. I think that's that's cool. There, that, there it is, uh, the NPEG Power. Yes. And you can find out more at their website, which I think is, N you just Google NPEG. N N N NPEGpower.com. NPEGpower.com. And now. Yes. <laughs> Time for Gadget 3. Oh, I thought they are having stomach trouble. <laughs> oh, okay. That, oh, that was an intro. That oh, was okay. A, da -da -da -da. I got it. I got, got it. it. Okay, <laughs> from the Green Product Show. Now, this is not a gadget, but I think this is really a great idea. So I, I walk over to a booth, and the sign on the booth is the Broken Plate Pendant Company. And their website is ibreakplates.com. <laughs> so she has all these broken dishes. So when I first I, I said, is, it, is this like a joke? Do you take like heirloom uh, plates and put them back together again? And she says, no, I break them further. I smash them with love. She but Leo, looks this like is why she I, enjoys this, actually. Yeah, yes. But this is why I think it's a great idea. There's a plate in the family. It's been in the family oh, for 100 years. Clever. Grandma's plate. It, they drop it. It breaks. So instead of everybody being depressed and trying to glue it together, which doesn't work. Make a she takes, pendant out of it. Yes, she takes all the broken pieces oh, that's neat. and makes jewelry out of it. So that now every member of the family, when someone says, oh, that's that's unique, what is that? You go, that is a piece of my grandma's 150-year-old gravy server. Oh, that's and they said, well, neat. you should have taken the gravy out because there's a big stain on your blouse. Uh, but no, I, I think it's really a great idea. And instead of the whole family being, oh, no, look what we've done. Uh, so they, they make cufflinks, wine bottle caps, and stuff with uh, they, shreds. They make brass men. knuckles. <laughs> they make, yeah, that looks like brass knuckles, doesn't it? I think it is napkin holders, isn't it? Oh, well, she says she calls them China knuckles. China, uh, knuckle. oh, China knuckles. Oh, China knuckles? Yeah. yeah. The fighter. He, uh, used to be, he used to fight Jackie Chan. China Channel knuckles. Oh, China <laughs> knuckles. These are actually beautiful. She had, does a very nice they job. really are. She yeah. was wearing some, and she had uh, the display on the table. They're at, <laughs> strangely Looks enough, they're at ibreakplates.com, yeah. and they range from, oh, of $25 to $65. And they also make matching sets. Like if you want something for bridesmaid or something, they can use the same plate 
and make a lot of jewelry that sort of matches. That's what the picture is. Uh, I think up on that's the really cool. It's a clever idea. I thought so too. Yeah, it looks like she's letting them. She's putting lead around them, like uh, leaded yeah. glass. Yeah, she's letting them live, letting them survive. Wow, wow, really neat. Uh, and she sells them on Etsy. So that's you, her website. That's yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yes. Uh, 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 Etsy is one. Yeah, you can get there via iBreakPlates dot com, right, right. and then go into the shop, the Etsy shop. All right, Dick, we're going to do in just a bit uh, my Turn the Table Turkey. Before we do that, though, can I point out that many wonderful films are available for viewing at a very affordable cost at Netflix.com. Surely you've heard me speak. Oh, yeah. What, like five bucks a shot to watch them? Seven ninety nine a month for unlimited. Five bucks a shot. That's pennies. What? Yeah, you know, I was just thinking about Kramer versus Kramer. I was thinking how much I liked that. 1979, Dustin Hoffman, Meryl Streep. What a great movie that was. Academy Award winner, as I remember. Uh, so they got lots of great movies, old and new, although they're a little better on the older uh, stuff. There's newer stuff. Too. There's also TV shows. I've been watching The Killing. I stupidly paid for this on demand. And then I realized, wait a minute, the whole thing's on Netflix. <laughs> it's all on Netflix. The Office, uh, the first uh, seven seasons. Lilyhammer, we were talking about. Steven Van Zandt, that's on Netflix, too. Uh, yeah. We could watch a little bit of that. Uh, in, the beauty is, now I'm, I'm launching it on my Mac. Works on any computer, but you can also play it on your iPad, your iPhone, your Android phone, most tablets, your Xbox 360, your, uh, let's see, what else? Your uh, PlayStation 3. This is a Netflix original series. And I kind of like this. This was a, I believe it's a remake of a, a Swedish or, or, or Danish show that they remade with little Stevie Van Zandt. Uh, just a great, great I want to relocate movie. in the U.S. It ain't safe around here no more. You give us Aldo DeLucci, and we'll send you to the goddamn North Pole. Hey, 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 hey. I am here, and I insist that we take us in. When you need a warrant for that, Dad, it's a, maybe it's a joint uh, venture between America and uh, Sweden. Oh. Or, or Norwegian. And, and he, he starts a bar. Uh, like like a mafia bar in this tiny little town in the middle of nowhere. It's a really good show. Anyway, that is available on Netflix and only on Netflix streaming. And that's one of the beauties of it. They're starting to do their own production. Lilyhammer Season 1 uh, is available uh, now on Netflix. And you know, it, yeah, it did. It aired on the Norwegian State Network. So I'm figuring this is the best thing I could do to study for going to Norway is watch Lillehammer. There you go. You see? There you go. I know you all can about do it, it. At the airport, too. I, I know. Anywhere that I go, I've got Netflix. I, we even had a, 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 one of those new sharp, beautiful 60 inch sharp TVs. It had a Netflix button on the remote control. Wow. Oh, that's great. Try it free. Netflix.com slash twit. And uh, if you already have it, and I know most of you do, tell a friend, would you? Because uh, we need the money. Netflix.com <laughs> slash twit. Somebody said, how dare you go to Norway after canceling Game On saying you didn't have any money? They're paying my way, okay? It's not costing me any money to go to Norway. We actually canceled because I thought I, I was going to cost me money. I thought I can't do this. And then they said, no, 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 we'll take care of everything. So I'm excited. Thank you. I don't know who's paying for it, but uh, if it's if it's little Stevie Does it Van matter? Zandt. <laughs> no, I don't care. All right, Dick, if you will do the honors, I yes. will show you. So we'll play the What the Heck Is It contest. Oh, you. okay. Yeah, go ahead. And one day a week, yes, Dick DiBartolo, Mads Madness writer, the Gizwiz, Leo Laporte, looks under his desk. Now, he had some good stuff for the past few weeks. Ah! But what's he going to have now? Yes. Oh, uh, what piece of crap on this week's Turn the Table Turkey? I have to play the other one. I could just listen to this over and over again, actually. Oh, look, I found some crap under here. What is this? Oh, cool. It's Turn the Table Turkey. Turkey. 
So, Dick, I don't even know what this is. Maybe you know what this is. Take a look. Okay. Take well, a look at this and tell me what this is. It's called the micro cone. The micro cone from dev audio.com. Oh, uh, okay. It's a made in choice. Australia. That might help. Is it uh, one of those devices that can turn anything into a speaker? Oh, it's close. No. But that's actually, okay. you're, you're on to something. You're on to something. I don't know how you knew from just looking at that. I'm impressed. Well, maybe well, if I yeah. maybe if I take it out of the box, you'll be able to tell what it is. Oh, okay. You mean you? Can't. That's a good clue. <laughs> yeah. No, it's going to fool you if you if you look at is it. Is it really? Yeah, okay. I, I, don't don't be so sure. So I'm taking oh, okay. this out of the uh, out of the micro cone box. There it is. Oh, it is in fact minute. a cone. This might help. It's got a USB connection. I'll show and you. And it's the, not a speaker of any kind. It is kind. not a speaker. Wow, I am baffled. Yeah, Isn't it's, this so it's USB. It's USB. In fact, I'll plug in the USB. Oh, um, does it send music and video to? Nope. The TV? It is no. a microphone, Dick. What? It is a very interesting idea. Now, this is kind of a first look because I haven't had a chance to use it, and I'm going to review it on Before You Buy. They handed it to me for Before You Buy. Oh, yeah, okay. But I and wanted to gonna show it, it to you. Right. Well, the idea is it has six microphones in six different directions on it. Mm -hmm. And so when you're having a meeting, you put this in the middle of the table, and it records each direction as a separate channel onto your computer, on your Mac oh. or your iPhone. Actually, you control it from the iPhone. The remote controls on the iPhone. So, so, I mean, this is kind of wild, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Now, Leo, it, it really is for a roundtable meeting then, right? Because yes. otherwise you wouldn't do it for a concert. Of, of external <laughs> noise. Yeah. yeah, you wouldn't you wouldn't want it for a concert. No, the idea is it's more like, um, and that's, you know, I'm waiting. We're going to have a big staff meeting. And at the next okay. staff meeting, I'm going to use this and record it. And the idea is that, you know, it's, as usually is the case when you do one of these uh, staff meetings that everybody's talking and uh, you don't know who said what or where they are. Now, the app is available on the uh, App Store. It's not, oddly enough, it's not free. It's $5. Um, I, I don't Who's know. Strange. Yeah, you'd think that if you buy this, you'd get the app for free, but uh, but apparently not. So hmm. um, I don't know. I'm just going to, I'm going to set it up. We're going to try it. Uh, they have, it, it, mean, it seems like a very intriguing product. Uh, the micro cone, and then it has recording software that will record each channel, and it's a, it's what they call an array microphone. They also have a developers section. I think they're encouraging people to so, write. So you really recording six channels? Yeah. Of sound. Yeah, there's wow. six different microphones in it. Yeah, not cheap. And you can isolate channels with with the software. Yeah. Exactly. That would be that would be great. It seems odd that they're recording. If I only knew three more people. <laughs> for you, this is totally useless. But for me, yeah. I think kind of interesting. They it is oh, it it's sounds, not cheap. Three hundred sixty bucks. Oh my word! Yeah, okay. and and it makes no sense to buy it unless you also get the recording software, which they unaccountably charge another five bucks for. <laughs> that is just bizarre. I don't. I just don't get that. But yeah. uh, anyway, uh, that's I guess because they 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 want other people to write this software as well. Um, maybe that's why I don't know. Um, but so you you, ha of, you uh, haven't actually tried recording anything. I so will. Far. I will. I didn't get a chance oh, to because yeah, no, I just no, got no, back I, from I'm NAB. That's where we got this. I'm very intrigued by it. So uh, it lets you. It also. Oh, I didn't mention this. It transcribes it. They have nuance built in. So it will. Now I don't know. It's not going to do a great job because you know. But it does have speech to text conversion. So uh, nice. it will and it will convert the speech into text. There's a keyword summary. You can see uh, on the software it does different tr shows who is talking when and for how long, and has separate recordings for each person. Nice, isn't that kind of interesting? Now, if you have more yeah. than six people in the conference, you you will only know which direction they're coming from, and you probably want to cleverly position everybody around the uh, <laughs> the table. So that each one gets kind of right in there, but what I is think it called microcone? Microcone, and and the uh, so, and the website is uh, dev audio 
com. Again, a little okay. pricey, but you know, if you think about the application, it's not just for a guy at home. This is for a business yeah. where they want to record uh, each individual direction separately. It's got speech transcription, and uh, it does have a remote for the iPhone, so you can control the recorder, and that at least is free. <laughs> um, uh, but you can't play it back unless you record it onto a Mac. So you do need a Macintosh oh, okay. uh, for this. It's not. I don't think it'll work on Windows. I don't know. Interesting. Yeah, I think it's very interesting. I'll actually. use it the next time uh, I, uh, I'm at a meeting with a, a bunch of people, and uh, I'll, I'll give you a report back. Um, it's too bad it's so Does expensive. Does it eliminate swear words? Yeah. Because you don't want to play those meetings on the you air. You do not want to play those meetings on the air. The Micro Cone, and I will have a full report on it next week. Actually, not next week, in two weeks. No, not next week. On Before yep. You Buy. That, my friends, is my turn the table turkey. But no, unfortunately, the show is not over. <clears throat> <laughs> I know you'd like it to be, but no, it's 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 continuing. Soon, and actually, soon it'll be over soon. I think you might be interested in this particular Warehouse Friday visit. Because if I'm not wrong, I think we're about to play Taps for something... <laughs> That was a very popular favorite. Ladies and gentlemen, I urge you now to strap on your walking shoes, plug your iPhone ear pods in, and put on some marching music. Hang on music. your end peg. <laughs> because here we go to Dick's Gadget Warehouse. Mind the stairs. They're geeky and they're goofy. Together they are loopy. When gadgets pass away, uh -oh. he takes them out. Oh, oh. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here he is, Dickie D. Leo. Hello. You can go to, yes, you can go to gizwiz.biz because I put a picture of this up there. I had one. Oh, Leo, these are right. So it goes back to February 1981 when RCA introduces their new video cassette recorder convertible look at the size of this sucker convertible as in 22 pounds <laughs> for the player and the tuna oh my now, goodness yes leo that is merely the tuna and the timer yeah by the way so blinking 12 just like yeah, every so, other know, I, I, VCR I plugged it ever. in and I said I bet it's going to blink 12 and I had to take the shot about about six times to get the 12 on on the screen oh, so yes it has never changed since 1981 still. it still blinks 12 blinking 12 since 1981 yes yeah, so listen to the uh, so these are some of the uh, uh, the uh, press points the player weighs only 11 pounds including the battery which makes this the lightest portable home recorder on the market. You could take it with you. Today, yeah, exactly. And this is really good. The six-hour recorder can operate as a portable for over one hour. Wow. Record your copy of, yes. of uh, The Brady Bunch, the whole show. The whole, the show. whole show. And then the object was you could sit the tuner and the timer next to each other for your home convertible system priced at, you want to take a guess, the two units together? $1,200. You're very good. That was very good. $1,400. Wow. But of course, they, they would discount it. Right. And, and for, there, there's more. There's more. Well, actually, there's less. There's less. Because if you go on vacation and you want to shoot video, there is no camera. But... You could get the RCA CC010 that had an eight time two speed power zoom for only guess. Um, I don't know, another eight hundred dollars. Yeah, pretty good. Okay, a thousand fifty. Uh, but it had special effects like fade in and fade out. Mm, well, and well. Yeah. So this whole thing together was probably like 30 pounds and $2,500. Uh, and, and of course, now the the tuna section uh, will be shortly in the recycle bin because you know, it's, it's analog and it does nothing. Either that or I have an 11-pound clock. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. There Boss. you go. I just thought uh, I'd show you real quickly. This is the software. Uh, recording uh, from one channel, uh, and then if I tap, if I snap my fingers, 
on the other side, you can see it shows a different oh, microphone. Oh, the other channels. Yeah, there's, yeah, yeah, a, yeah. there's six channels total. And I just turn it around. I can talk into the other side of the microphone. And then you can name the channel. So I can put a name next to the different people. Uh, oh, like that's that. good. Yeah. It's for group discussions, sure. obviously. Yeah, yeah no, absolutely. Yeah. And, and then it will it will also do transcriptions in theory. We will have to try. Oh, it. yeah, I would love. Oh, well, yeah, nuance is pretty good. Nuance does a good job, but uh, remember, it's like not old on. was never good. No, I never liked old. It's the nuance the is nuance the one. Yeah, wonderful. that's the one you really want. Yeah. So, and you can name it and so forth. It's kind of it's an interesting idea. I think so. Uh, you know, I thought you were going to mention something else that died this week. Oh, Dick Clark. No, well, right? that, that also. No? Go ahead. Talk about him because he, he did pass away. I wasn't going to be quite right. so crass. Uh, but, yeah, he did pass away at the age of 82, and we'll miss him oh, for sure. Oh, okay. I know. The, I, know I your, thought you were going to talk about the Chumbie. Oh, yeah. I was going to just do a whole uh, Gadget Warehouse thing on on it, but you, we can talk well, about it. Well, that's why I thought you were going to do that for the Gadget Warehouse today. But you're going to oh, do that okay. next week, you mean? Uh, no, I'm going to do it the week you come back. Okay, we'll save it. But just so yeah. people know, that the Chumbi is uh, is uh, no longer. They're turning off the it's servers. Not, right. Well, they're, they're, well, it's not dead, dead, dead. They're hoping someone comes up and goes, that was the best idea ever. Yeah. I want to buy it and yeah. everything that comes with it because it is up for sale. Well, but let's just a moment of lot. silence for Dick Clark and his Chumbi. Actually, it's been uh, almost an hour of silence since we started. <laughs> I forgot the recorder again. Oh no! Oh. Uh, uh, no, yeah, you know, I think uh, uh, Dick had a long, rich life. Man, he was America's oh. teenager for sixty years, um, and uh, he had a stroke a few years ago. I think two thousand nine. And of course, if you saw him on uh, uh, the Rock and New Year's Eve, you could see that you know he was really happy to be there, but his speech a little halting because of, due to the stroke, and I think he had a, a heart attack. Uh, just a few uh, days ago, so uh, yeah. we, you know it's uh, certainly one of the legends in the in my industry. And uh, absolutely, what what industry are you in? I always I'm always embarrassed to ask. I now that you brought it up, I should, I don't know. I am a coal oh, okay. miner. Okay. I don't know. I don't okay. know what you know. I my mom still to this day says, "What is it that you do exactly?" Yeah, and I can't. I yeah. can't really. Tell I think her. there are a thousand people in the chat room asking that same question. <laughs> <laughs> that's, 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 uh, now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, before we go, it would be uh, behoove us to bring in the Jingle Singers one more time for a little ditty we call The Letters Theme. Kids? <laughs> Duckman says yeah. in our chat room, Dick Clark had a good beat. You could dance to him. I rate him a 98. That's cute. <laughs> That's pretty good. Right, That's cute. From the old bandstand days. The old bandstand. We got a Boy, couple yeah, letters. I mean, yeah, well, uh, actually, they both refer to the same thing. So I'm going to read mine first, and then you can read yours. All right. Thorn Merripin, Thorn Merripin writes, uh, we were talking about that Mad had a record out years ago that every time you played this record, it was on those floppy disc records that was bound into an issue of man. Every time you played the record, it had a different ending. And uh, Thorne Meripin, uh, Meripin writes, you know, we still have that record around here somewhere. It was fantastic. It would start out with a guy singing about it being a great, big, wonderful, super, incredible, spectacular day. Then the changeover would occur and someone would come in singing about the worst possible string of events <laughs> happened to them. And it was not a super spectacular day. I had not seen anything like it, uh, like it prior and nothing like it after. It was truly one of a kind, Thorn Meripin. Um, and then another gentleman wrote, and Leah's going to read his letter. Yeah, Bob Scott, because we wondered, we puzzled, how do they do that? Yeah, and actually yeah, Mad Magazine so wasn't... Wasn't the only one to do that. The Monty Python did it too. He explains the way it's done is you lay down multiple concentric grooves on the record. Okay, now this is the thing. You know, it, it kind of ties back to a trick question that I remember uh, being asked many years ago How many grooves are there on a record? You can't ask it anymore because nobody knows what a record is. But remember those vinyl records? You yes. Know, how many grooves are there on a vinyl record? 
Does it depend on how long the song is? Not at all. No, really? There's, Whoa. There's only one, Dick. <laughs> Uh, it's, it starts uh, at the beginning and it goes all the way around. But that's what they uh -huh. did differently on this record. For each version of the song, there's another groove. And when you lay the needle down, well, I'll, he'll explain it. Imagine you're cutting a master disc. You set the RPM normally, but you set the speed that the cutter moves from the edge to the center at, let's say, four times the normal speed. When you're done, you'd see a single groove spiraling towards the center of the record as normal, but there'd be a lot of wasted space, blank vinyl. The groove, you'd see the groove, it would look like a snail, but there'd be a lot of extra vinyl. It would play fine, but it would only run, you know, a quarter of the time. Next, you do it again. You reset that blank, you repeat the process, but this time you start at a different spot on the outside of the record. That puts another groove spiraling into the center, not in any way of uh, interfering with the first. Wow. Now we've got two grooves. When you go back, which track you hear depends on where you drop the needle, which track the needle picks when it touches the record. You can add more tracks and more tracks. Monty yeah, Python. I think, I think it had six. Submit. So they'd have to, you know... Space it out six times wider. Yeah. Right? Monty Python means that you'd only have a sixth of the playing time on that record, but nobody looks at that record and says, wow, that's going to play for five minutes. <laughs> yes. It's whatever it does, right? Yes, right. Yeah. Monty Python did this with their matching tie and handkerchief album in the 70s. It had two concentric tracks on one side. I remember my friends and I played the record twice and happened to get the same track both times on the B side. Then we took it over to a guy's house and we were astounded when something completely different came out on the third oh, try. Amazing. Isn't that hysterical? Yeah. I mean, it's pretty neat for back in those days. Yeah. And, and especially on the, especially mad on those crappy little vinyl things. That uh, was clever. Uh, one of our chatters in the uh, chat room said this is also used for children's games. So he had, uh, he, uh, he said he had a chariot race game. That had a record, and you'd play it, and it would call the race. And there were, he said, there, every time you played it, there'd be a different winner. Webs fifty six fifty nine, multiple grooves, multiple winners, depending on which groove you happen to hit. Wow, isn't that clever? Yeah, I I had <clears throat> you know, never heard about this. Yeah, do do you remember a company called Cook Records? No. Okay. Cook Records. Even as a kid, I knew this was the dumbest idea ever, and. Cook made the first stereo record that I know of, but the turntable had two recording heads oh. and with two different cartridges. And the album had the right channel as one set of grooves and the left channel as another set of grooves. And you laid the two needles on it so that one side was playing for the right channel only and the other was playing the left. And there was an adjustment so you could adjust the head in case it went out of whack. And I thought, this is, this is the most dumb thing. Uh, but shortly thereafter, someone came out with the idea of uh, putting stereo uh, on, on a single record using one single cartridge. Yeah. But it was a, it was a bizarre concept. But you had excellent separation. So, uh, yeah, Steve you did. Stephen in Toronto has given me one of these uh, uh, Mad Magazine. There's a YouTube video of one of them. It's oh. it's Gall and the Family. Oh, okay. Do you, does that ring a bell? Yeah, I remember. The, I remember. It. I, it was I a parody of the uh, of the old uh, All in the Family. I'll just yeah. play. I'll play a little bit of it here. Yeah, uh, for you. Mad Magazine presents Gall and the Family Fair. Larry Siegel wrote this, Angela Torres. Oh, Torres. dear, and welcome to the middle American home of TV's first and foremost foul mouth for the image, Storchy Bunker Hill, and me, his incredibly stupid wife, Dingaling. Each week, we bring you another episode in our lives filled with hilarious controversy. <laughs> That's enough. You get the idea. Yeah, yeah, what's, I get the what, idea. What's fun is the guy who did this actually matched it to the 
panels that were originally uh, in Mad Magazine. That's re- that's interesting. Which is kind of yeah. nicely done. So I you get. To- we'll, I think we'll just sue them. Yeah, I no. think you should because that's clearly a violation of everything. And then I yell at you, and you yell at me. Look. I want card all day. It's also terrible impressions. <laughs> but the, you get the idea. Yeah, the yeah. Idea. yeah. Oh, gee. <laughs> How fun. How fun. Oh, and Dale Poco says he just dug out his box of 45s, and he actually has that one. There you go. The uh, the the uh, Super Spectacular Day? I don't know. Which wow. one do you have? Oh. Which one do you have? Because I would love to hear the Super Spectacular Day. That would be fun to get. Wait a minute. Here it is. Here it is. Uh, no, no, that's the Monty Python. Okay. Oh. Okay. Well, uh, Dick, uh, we've read our letters. Uh, we've made fools of ourselves. I think we can call this another successful adventure. Uh, uh, yes, it, by it, our standards, it's a winner. <laughs> by our dreadful standards, it's a winner. <laughs> uh, now, I, next when week, are you leaving? When uh, do you go? I'm leaving Monday for Lillehammer. Oh. Ooh, and okay. uh, and uh, I don't know if I'll ever come back. Just depends. But uh, I'm like uh, I just hope you have a great time next Saturday. I I'll ask okay. Scott if he wants to do the show. And yeah, uh, that'd be fun. No reason not to, right? We'll let no, you know. No, I'm, I'm yeah. up for it. Yeah. Yeah. If not, Dick well, will I can use the fa- same five gadgets today. He probably doesn't listen. He wouldn't remember. Yeah, save me a load of time. Yeah, no, no, I'd idea. love to do it. Yeah. All right, yeah. I, and, I like it doing the show. I just love it. And I will do a full review on the microcone with all of its features and stuff. Uh, I just thought it'd be fun to pull this out since I just got yeah, it. Yeah, no, it's great. And uh, yeah. we'll, but we'll ha- on uh, before you buy, which is our product review show, which we do every uh, Thursday on the network. Won't be this week because I won't be here, but the following week I'll have uh, some recordings and I can show you all of that. Dick, have a great. In- is it warm and sunny in New York? Or yeah, yeah. it's about seventy degrees, oh, so we're leaving great. right like in the next three minutes down to the marina. Go to a, head up the Hudson. Have a great boat ride. And taking Bob with us, so in case we break down, he can row us home. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. We'll see you later. And uh, make sure you watch the show live with Scott Wilkinson right after the Tech Guy on Saturdays around about 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern Time, 2100 UTC at twit.tv. And, of course, we've got all 1,362 episodes available for download on the website. Twit.tv slash DGW for David Gizwiz. Thanks, Dick. I'll see you next time. I'll be here.